Do animals ever help each other? Populations of organisms within an environment may engage in a variety of relationships with each other. For example, in a relationship known as mutualism, each species provides a benefit to the other. Mutualism can occur between two animal species like the relationship between large coral reef fishes and the smaller species like the wrasses that swim into their mouths and eat the parasites that may have taken up residence there. Mutualistic relationships also allow bean plants to grow better because they exchange nutrients with rhizobium fungi living on their roots. What products are made from recycling plastic? A new clothing fiber called Fortral EcoSpun is made from recycled plastic soda bottles. The fiber is knit or woven into garments such as fleece for outerwear or long underwear. The processor estimates that every pound of Fortral EcoSpun fiber results in 10 plastic bottles being kept out of landfills. How much newspaper must be recycled to save one tree? One thirty-five to forty feet, ten point six to twelve m. Tree produces a stack of newspapers four feet, one point two m thick. This much newspaper must be recycled to save a tree. How much garbage does the average American generate? According to the Environmental Protection Agency, nearly 232 million tons of municipal waste was generated in 2000. This is equivalent to 4.6 pounds 2.1 kilograms per person per day, or approximately 1,700 pounds 770 kilograms per person per year. How is it possible to measure the pH of a solution? An easy way to measure the pH of a solution is with pH paper. This paper is treated with a chemical indicator that changes colors. Depending on the concentration of H+, hydrogen ions, in the solution. What are Operation Ranch Hand and Agent Orange? Operation Ranch Hand was the tactical military project for the aerial spraying of herbicides in South Vietnam during the Vietnam Conflict, 1961-1975. In these operations, Agent Orange, the collective name for the herbicides 2,4-D and 2,4,5-T, was used for the defoliation. The name derives from the color-coded drums in which the herbicides were stored. In all, 
U.S. troops sprayed approximately 19 million gallons. 72 million liters, of herbicides over 4 million acres, 1.6 million hectare. Concerns about the health effects of Agent Orange were initially voiced in 1970. And since then the issue has been complicated by scientific and political debate. In 1993 a 16-member panel of experts reviewed the existing scientific evidence and found strong evidence of a statistical association between herbicides and soft tissue sarcoma. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, Hodgkin's disease, and chloracne. On the other hand, the panel concluded that no connection appeared to exist between exposure to Agent Orange and skin cancer, bladder cancer, brain tumors, or stomach cancer. How does one prepare a 110 dilution? A 110 dilution means one part in a total of 10. There are three different ways to prepare a 110 dilution. 1. The weight to weight, WW. Method. 2. The weight to volume, WV. Method. And 3. The volume to volume, VV. Method. In the weight to weight method, 1.0 g of solute is dissolved in 9.0 g of solvent. Yielding a total of 10 parts by weight, one of which is solute. In the weight to volume method, enough solvent is added to 1.0 g of solute to make a total volume of 10 ml. In this method, one part, by weight, is dispersed in 10 total parts, by volume. Since most biological solutions are very dilute, the accuracy of most research is not affected if a previously weighed solute is dissolved in the desired volume of solvent. The volume to volume method is preferred when the solute is a liquid. 1 milliliter of solute, such as ethanol, Added to 9.0 ml of water yields a 10-part solution, one part of which is the solute. What are producers and consumers? Producers and consumers are terms used to describe the different roles played by species within ecosystems. Producers are those who fix energy that is, they take energy from one source and convert it into a form. Their biomass, that makes it accessible to others within the system, the consumers. Consumer levels are numbered according to their reliance on producers as a main source of energy. So primary consumers are those that rely heavily on producers, while secondary and tertiary. And even quaternary, consumers exploit other consumers as their preferred energy sources. What are some of the tests scientists use to identify major types of organic compounds in living organisms? Scientists use different tests to detect the presence of carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Commonly used tests include the Benedict's test for reducing sugars. The iodine test for starch, 
the Bayerid test for proteins. The Sudan 4 test and the Greece SPA test for lipids, and the DISC diphenylamine test for nucleic acids. Who invented the thermometer? The Greeks of Alexandria knew that air expanded as it was heated. Hero of Alexandria, 1st century CE, and Philo of Byzantium. Fluid CA 250 BCE, made simple thermoscopes, but they were not real thermometers. In 1592 Galileo, 1564-1642, made a kind of thermometer that also functioned as a barometer. And in 1612 his friend Santorio Santorio, 1561-1636, adapted the air thermometer, a device in which a colored liquid was driven down by the expansion of air, to measure the body's temperature change during illness and recovery. Still, it was not until 1713 that Daniel Fahrenheit 1686-1736 began developing a thermometer with a fixed scale. He worked out his scale from two fixed points. The melting point of ice and the heat of the healthy human body. He realized that the melting point of ice was a constant temperature whereas the freezing point of water varied. Fahrenheit put his thermometer into a mixture of ice, water, and salt, which he marked off at zero degrees. And, using this as a starting point, marked off melting ice at 32 degrees and blood heat at 96 degrees. In 1835 it was discovered that normal blood measured 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Sometimes Fahrenheit used spirit of wine as the liquid in the thermometer tube. But more often he used specially purified mercury. Later, the boiling point of water, 212 degrees Fahrenheit, became the upper fixed point of the thermometer. What is the Benedict's test for reducing sugars? A commonly used test to detect carbohydrates is the Benedict's. Test for reducing sugars such as glucose and fructose. Benedict's reagent, containing sodium bicarbonate sodium citrate, and copper sulfate, is added to a solution and heated. The Benedict's test identifies reducing sugars based on their ability to reduce the cupric ions to cuprous oxide at high pH values, basic solutions. Cuprous oxide is green to reddish orange. A green solution indicates a small amount of reducing sugars. While a reddish-orange solution indicates an abundance of reducing sugars. If the solution contains sucrose, a non-reducing sugar. There is no change in color in the solution, and it remains blue. What is the Superfund Act? In 1980 the United States Congress passed the Comprehensive Environmental Response, Compensation, and Liability Act, 
commonly known as the Superfund program. This law, along with amendments in 1986 and 1990, established a dollar 16.3 dash billion superfund financed jointly by federal and state governments and by special taxes on chemical and petrochemical industries which provide 86 percent of the funding the purpose of the superfund is to identify and clean up abandoned hazardous waste dump sites and leaking underground tanks that threaten human health and the environment. To keep taxpayers from footing most of the bill, cleanups are based on the polluter pays principle. The EPA is charged with locating dangerous dump sites, finding the potentially liable culprits. Ordering them to pay for the entire cleanup, and suing them if they don't. When the EPA can find no responsible party, it draws money out of the Superfund for cleanup. Was the Exxon Valdez spill the largest oil spill of the 20th century? Although the Exxon Valdez was widely publicized as a major spill of 255,500 barrels, 35,000 tons, in 1989, it was not the largest of the century. The first major commercial oil spill occurred on March 18, 1967, when the tanker Torrey Canyon grounded on the Seven Stones Shoal off the coast of Cornwall, England, spilling 830,000 barrels, 119,000 tons, of Kuwaiti oil into the sea. This was the first major tanker accident. However, during World War II German U-boat attacks on tankers between January and June 1942 spilled 4.3 million barrels. 590,000 tons, of oil off the east coast of the United States. Even this spill is dwarfed by the deliberate dumping of oil from Sea Island into the Persian Gulf during the first Gulf War in 1991. It is estimated that the Sea Island spill equaled almost 10.9 million barrels, 1.5 million tons, of oil. A major spill also occurred in Russia in October 1994 in the Komi region of the Arctic. The size of the spill was reported to be as much as 2 million barrels, 286,000 tons. In addition to the large disasters, day-to-day -day pollution occurs from drilling. Platforms where waste generated from platform life, including human waste. And oils, chemicals, mud, and rock from drilling are discharged into the water. How are centigrade temperatures converted into Fahrenheit temperatures? The formula for converting centigrade temperatures into Fahrenheit is degree F equals degree C x 9 fifths plus 32. The formula for converting Fahrenheit temperatures into centigrade is degree C, degree F32, X5 ninths. What do the numbers inside the recycling symbol on plastic containers mean?
the Society of the Plastics Industry developed a voluntary coating system for plastic containers to assist recyclers in sorting plastic containers. The symbol is designed to be imprinted on the bottom of the plastic containers. The numerical code appears inside a three-sided triangular arrow. A guide to what the numbers mean is listed below. The most commonly recycled plastics are polyethylene terephthalate, PET, and high-density polyethylene, HDPE. What is a Climax Community? Terrestrial communities of organisms move through a series of stages from bare earth or rock to forests of mature trees. This last stage is described as the climax because it is thought that if left undisturbed, communities can remain in this stage in perpetuity. However, more recent studies suggest that climax may be only one part of a continuous cycle of successional stages in these communities. Do animals ever run out of energy? Because the amount of energy available to an animal at any particular trophic level is limited by the distance between that level and primary producers. Animals can obtain only a finite amount of energy from their habitats. Therefore, over evolutionary time, species make concessions in terms of their lifestyle attributes in order to best utilize their limited resources. Examples of items within the energy budget are activities like reproduction, growth, and maintenance. While the energy expended on growth and reproduction can remain in the system as biomass, the energy used for maintenance is lost as heat. Why are big and fierce animals rare? Because the transfer of energy from one individual to another is inefficient. Only about 10% of the energy used to build a tasty worm actually is available to the hungry robin who eats it. As we move through the levels of the food web, each predator, or predator grouping, tends to become bigger and more aggressive, fiercer, than the last. However, the amount of energy available to each level continues to decline, so there is very little room at the top of the web for a predator large enough and fierce enough to consume all the others. In fact, it is estimated that only 1 slash 1000 th of the energy brought into the system by photosynthesis actually makes it to the hawk or owl at the top of such a system. Less energy available means that fewer individuals can be supported. So big, fierce animals tend to be rare in their ecosystems. How does the iodine test detect starch? Starch is a coiled polymer of glucose. 
Iodine reacts with the coiled molecules and turns bluish black when added to a solution. A solution that remains a yellowish brown color is a negative test for starch. Whereas one that turns bluish black is a positive test for starch. What is an ecological pyramid? If the organisms in a food chain are arranged according to trophic levels, they form a pyramid, with a broad base representing the primary producers, and usually only a few individuals in the highest part of the pyramid. Also known as a pyramid of numbers, an ecological pyramid is a way of describing the distribution of energy, biomass, or individuals among the different levels of ecosystem structure. What is the NIMBY syndrome? NIMBY is the acronym for Not In My Backyard. It refers to major community resistance. To construction of new incinerators, landfills, prisons, roads, and so forth. NIMBY is not in my front yard. How does the Biorid test indicate the presence of protein? The bond between the amino group and the carboxyl acid group on adjacent amino acids in a protein is a peptide bond. When the Biorid reagent, 1% solution of copper sulfate is added to a solution containing peptide bonds, the solution turns a violet color. The violet color is a positive test for the presence of protein. The more 516 intense the color, the greater the number of peptide bonds that react. What is the most efficient animal? Efficiency may be judged by a variety of measures. And thus it is difficult to pick the most efficient animal. For example, small animals tend to be much less efficient than larger. Ones at conserving the heat required to run their metabolic reactions. Conversely, many small animals are much more efficient at reproduction. Compare the reproductive output of a roach to that of an elephant. Therefore, determining the comparative efficiency of different animals depends upon what attributes are selected for measurement. The total amount of waste is distributed as follows. How critical is the problem of landfills in the United States? Landfilling has been an essential component of waste management for several decades. In 1960, 62% of all garbage was sent to landfills, and by 1980 the figure had risen to 81%. By 1990, 84% of the 269 million tons of municipal 
solid waste that was generated was sent to landfills. An increased awareness of the benefits of recycling has brought a decline in the actual number of landfills from 4,482 in 1995 to 2. 142 in 2000 as well as a decrease in the amount of municipal solid waste that is sent to landfills. Figures for 2000 indicate that only 60% of the municipal solid waste generated was sent to landfills. The total amount of recycled waste increased from 8% to 33% between 1990 and 2000. How can plastics be made biodegradable? Plastic neither rusts nor rots. This is an advantage in its usage, but when it comes to disposal of plastic, the advantage turns into a liability. Degradable plastic has starch in it so that it can be attacked by starch-eating bacteria to eventually disintegrate the plastic into bits. Chemically degradable plastic can be broken up with a chemical solution that dissolves it. Used in surgery, biodegradable plastic stitches slowly dissolve in the body fluids. Photodegradable plastic contains chemicals that disintegrate. Over a period of 1 to 3 years when exposed to light. 25% of the plastic yolks used to package beverages are made from a plastic called E. coli, which is photodegradable. What is scientific notation? Scientific notation allows scientists to manipulate very large or very small numbers. It is based on the fact that all numbers can be expressed as the product of two numbers. One of which is the power of the number 10, written as the small superscript next to the number 10 and called the exponent. Positive exponents indicate how many times the number must be multiplied by 10 while negative exponents indicate how many time a number must be divided by 10. What is a survivorship curve? A survivorship curve can indicate how long individuals survive in a population. There are three distinct types of curves. In a type I curve, the young have a high survival rate and typically live a long life. An example of this curve can be seen in the doll sheep that live in MT. Denali National Park in Alaska. Humans are also an example of a type I curve. In a type 2 curve, individuals have a relatively constant death rate throughout their lifespan. An example of this curve can be found in populations of American robins. A type 3 curve includes those species that have a large number of young most of which die at a high rate. At an early age but have a lower death rate at later ages. An example of this survivorship curve can be found in lobsters and crabs.
What is a life history table? A life history table, also referred to as a life table, is a table that shows both survival and death rates in a specific population or organisms. The life table is patterned after actuarial tables used by insurance companies. Who was the first person to study populations mathematically? Thomas Robert Malthus, 1766 to 1834, in 1798 attempted to inform people that the human population like any other population had the potential to increase exponentially. Malthusian ideas were not well received. As he predicted the rate of population growth would exceed the ability of the land to produce food. His work was later used by Charles Darwin to explain his theory of natural selection. When offered a choice between plastic or paper bags for your groceries, which should you choose? The answer is neither. Both are environmentally harmful, and the question of which is the more damaging has no clear-cut answer. On one hand, Plastic bags degrade slowly in landfills and can harm wildlife if swallowed. And producing them pollutes the environment. On the other hand, producing the brown paper bags used in. Most supermarkets uses trees and pollutes the air and water. Overall, White or clear polyethylene bags require less energy for manufacture and cause less damage to the environment than do paper bags not made from recycled paper. Instead of having to choose between paper and plastic bags, you can bring your own reusable canvas or string containers to the store. And you can save and reuse any paper or plastic bags you get. What is a population? A population is a group composed of all members of the same species that live in a specific geographical area at a particular time. An example of a population might include all the gray squirrels that live in a certain urban park. The areas occupied by a population could include the small area. Measured in square millimeters, occupied by bacteria in a rotting apple to the vast areas of ocean. Square kilometers, that include the territory of migrating sperm whales. Population ecology is the branch of ecology that studies the structure and changes within a population. Studies of specific populations will indicate the dynamics of the population. In terms of active, ongoing growth, declining growth, or stability. How is nuclear waste stored and regulated? Nuclear wastes consist either of fission products formed from atom splitting of uranium, cesium, 
strontium, or krypton, or from transuranic elements formed when uranium atoms absorb free neutrons. Wastes from transuranic elements are less radioactive than fission products. However, these elements remain radioactive far longer than fission products. Transuranic wastes include irradiated fuel, spent fuel, in the form of 12 feet 4 meters long rods. High level radioactive waste in the form of liquid or sludge, and low level waste. Non-transuranic or legally high level, in the form of reactor hardware, piping, toxic resins. Water from fuel pools, and other items that have become contaminated with radioactivity. Currently, most spent nuclear fuel in the United States is safely stored. In specially designed pools at individual reactor sites around the country. If pool capacity is reached, licensees may move toward use of above-ground dry storage casks. The three low-level radioactive waste disposal sites are Barnwell, South Carolina, Hanford, Washington, and EnviroCare, Utah. Each site accepts low-level radioactive waste from specific regions of the country. But only EnviroCare uses above ground storage. Most high level nuclear waste has been stored in double walled stainless steel tanks surrounded by 3 feet 1 meter of concrete. The current best storage method, developed by the French in 1978, is to incorporate the waste into a special molten glass mixture. Then enclose it in a steel container and bury it in a special pit. The Nuclear Waste Policy Act of 1982, as amended in 1987, specified that high level radioactive waste would be disposed of underground in a deep geologic repository. Yucca Mountain, Nevada was chosen as the single site to be developed for disposal of high-level radioactive waste. On July 23, 2002, President George W. Bush signed House Joint Resolution 87, allowing the Department of Energy to establish a repository in Yucca Mountain to safely store nuclear waste. However, some scientists still expressed concerns about the estimates of how long it would take for rainwater and snow to infiltrate the mountain and corrode the containers. How did the original Celsius temperature scale differ from the one in use now? In 1742 the Swedish astronomer Anders Celsius, 1701-1744, set the freezing point of water at 100 degrees Celsius and the boiling point of water at 0 degrees Celsius. It was Carolus Linnaeus, 1707-1778, who reversed the scale. But a later textbook attributed the modified scale to Celsius, and the name has remained. What tests can be used to determine the presence of lipids? A very simple test to determine the presence of lipids is the grease spot. Test. Place a drop of solution on an unglazed, clean sheet of brown paper. Once the liquid evaporates, 
a spot containing lipids will remain visible. The Sudan 4 test also tests for lipids. It is based on the ability of lipids to selectively absorb pigments in fat soluble dyes. What is the SI system of measurement? French scientists as far back as the 17th and 18th centuries questioned the hodgepodge of the many illogical and imprecise standards used for measurement. And they began a crusade to make a comprehensive, logical, precise and universal measurement system called System Internationale des Unites, or SI for short. It uses the metric system as its base. Since all the units are in multiples of 10, calculations are simplified. Today, all countries except the United States, Burma, and Liberia use this system. However, some elements within American society do use SI scientists. Exporting slash importing industries and federal agencies as of November 30, 1992. The SI or metric system has seven fundamental standards the meter, for length, the kilogram, for mass, the second, for time, the ampere, for electric current, the Kelvin, for temperature, the candela, for luminous intensity, and the mole, for amount of substance. In addition, two supplementary units the radian, plane angle, and steradian, solid angle. And a large number of derived units compose the current system, which is still evolving. Some derived units, which use special names, are the hertz, Newton, Pascal, Joule, Watt, Coulomb, Volt, Farad, Ohm, Siemens, Weber, Tesla, Henry, Lumen, Lux, Becquerel, Gray, and Sievert. The C's unit of volume or capacity is the cubic decimeter, but many still use liter in its place. Very large or very small dimensions are expressed through a series of prefixes, which increase or decrease in multiples of 10. For example, a decimeter is one tenth of a meter, a centimeter is one slash one hundred of a meter, and a millimeter is one slash one thousand of a meter. A decameter is 10 meters. A hectometer is 100 meters, and a kilometer is 1000 meters. The use of these prefixes enables the system to express these units in an orderly way and avoid inventing new names and new relationships. What is the Kelvin temperature scale? Temperature is the level of heat in a gas, liquid, or solid. The freezing and boiling points of water are used as standard reference levels in both the metric, centigrade, and the English system, Fahrenheit. In the metric system, the difference between freezing and boiling is divided into 100 equal intervals called degree centigrade, degree C. In the English system, the intervals are divided into 180 units, with one unit called degree Fahrenheit, degree F. 
but temperature can be measured from absolute zero, no heat, no motion. This principle defines thermodynamic temperature and establishes a method to measure it upward. This scale of temperature is called the Kelvin temperature scale, after its inventor, William Thomson, Lord Kelvin. 1824 to 1907, who devised it in 1848. The Kelvin, symbol K, has the same magnitude as the degree centigrade. The difference between freezing and boiling water is 100 degrees, but the two temperatures differ by 273.15 degrees. Absolute zero, which is minus 273.15 degrees Celsius on the centigrade scale. What is the Kelvin temperature scale? Temperature is the level of heat in a gas, liquid, or solid. The freezing and boiling points of water are used as standard reference levels in both the metric centigrade and the English system, Fahrenheit. In the metric system, the difference between freezing and boiling is divided into 100 equal intervals called degree centigrade, degree C. In the English system, the intervals are divided into 180 units. With one unit called degree Fahrenheit, degree F. But temperature can be measured from absolute zero, no heat, no motion. This principle defines thermodynamic temperature and establishes a method to measure it upward. This scale of temperature is called the Kelvin temperature scale, after its inventor, William Thomson, Lord Kelvin. 1824 to 1907, who devised it in 1848. The Kelvin, symbol K, has the same magnitude as the degree centigrade. The difference between freezing and boiling water is 100 degrees, but the two temperatures differ by 273.15 degrees. Absolute zero, which is minus 273.15 degrees Celsius on the centigrade scale. What elements are common to all types of microscopes? Three elements are needed to form an image, a source of illumination, a specimen to be examined, and a system of lenses that focuses the illumination on the specimen and forms the image. What elements are common to all types of microscopes? Three elements are needed to form an image, a source of illumination, a specimen to be examined, and a system of lenses that focuses the illumination on the specimen and forms the image. What distinguishes the different types of microscopes? Microscopes have played a central role in the development of cell biology. Allowing scientists to observe cells and cell structures that are not visible to the human eye. 
The two basic types of microscopes are light microscopes and electron microscopes. The major differences between light and electron microscopes are the source of illumination and the construction of the lenses. Light microscopes utilize visible light as the source of illumination and a series of glass lenses. Electron microscopes utilize a beam of electrons emitted by a heated tungsten filament as the source of illumination. The lens system consists of a series of electromagnets. Recent advances using optical techniques have led to the development of specialized light microscopes, including fluorescence microscopy, phase contrast microscopy, and differential interference contrast microscopy. In fluorescence microscopy, a fluorescent dye is introduced to specific molecules. Both phase contrast microscopy and differential interference contrast microscopy utilize techniques that enhance and amplify slight changes in the phase of transmitted light as it passes through a structure that has a different refractive index than the surrounding medium. What distinguishes the different types of microscopes? Microscopes have played a central role in the development of cell biology. Allowing scientists to observe cells and cell structures that are not visible to the human eye. The two basic types of microscopes are light microscopes and electron microscopes. The major differences between light and electron microscopes are the source of illumination and the construction of the lenses. Light microscopes utilize visible light as the source of illumination and a series of glass lenses. Electron microscopes utilize a beam of electrons emitted by a heated tungsten filament as the source of illumination. The lens system consists of a series of electromagnets. Recent advances using optical techniques have led to the development of specialized light microscopes including fluorescence microscopy, phase contrast microscopy, and differential interference contrast microscopy. In fluorescence microscopy, a fluorescent dye is introduced to specific molecules. Both phase contrast microscopy and differential interference contrast microscopy utilize techniques that enhance and amplify slight changes in the phase of transmitted light as it passes through a structure that has a different refractive index than the surrounding medium. How do dissecting microscopes differ from compound microscopes? Compared to compound microscopes, dissecting microscopes also called stereoscopic microscopes provide a much larger working distance between the lens and stage in order to dissect and manipulate specimens. The light source on a dissecting microscope is above the specimen since the specimen is often too thick to allow light to be transmitted from a light source below the specimen. Dissecting microscopes are always binocular, which provides a three-dimensional image. How do dissecting microscopes differ from compound microscopes?
Compared to compound microscopes, dissecting microscopes also called stereoscopic microscopes provide a much larger working distance between the lens and stage in order to dissect and manipulate specimens. The light source on a dissecting microscope is above the specimen since the specimen is often too thick to allow light to be transmitted from a light source below the specimen. Dissecting microscopes are always binocular, which provides a three-dimensional image. What is the difference between magnification and resolution? Magnification making smaller objects seem larger is the measure of how much an object is enlarged. Resolution is the minimum distance that two points can be separated and still be seen as two distinct points. What is the difference between magnification and resolution? Magnification making smaller objects seem larger is the measure of how much an object is enlarged. Resolution is the minimum distance that two points can be separated and still be seen as two distinct points. Who invented the compound microscope? The principle of the compound microscope, in which two or more lenses are arranged to form an enlarged image of an object, occurred independently, at about the same time, to more than one person. Certainly many opticians were active in the construction of telescopes at the end of the 16th century. Especially in Holland. So it is likely that the idea of the microscope may have occurred to several of them independently. In all probability the date may be placed within the period 1590 to 1609. And the credit should go to three spectacle makers in Holland. Hans Janssen, his son Zacharias, 1580 to 1638, and Hans Lippershey. 1570 to 1619, have all been cited at various times as deserving chief credit. An Englishman, Robert Hooke, 1635 to 1703, was the first to make the best use of a compound microscope. And his book Micrographia, published in 1665, contains some of the most beautiful drawings of microscopic observations ever made. Who invented the compound microscope? The principle of the compound microscope in which two or more lenses are arranged to form an enlarged image of an object. Occurred independently, at about the same time, to more than one person. Certainly many opticians were active in the construction of telescopes at the end of the 16th century. Especially in Holland. So it is likely that the idea of the microscope may have occurred to several of them independently.
in all probability the date may be placed within the period 1590 to 1609. And the credit should go to three spectacle makers in Holland. Hans Janssen, his son Zacharias, 1580-1638, and Hans Lippershey, 1570-1619, have all been cited at various times as deserving chief credit. An Englishman, Robert Hook, 1635-1703, was the first to make the best use of a compound microscope. And his book Micrographia, published in 1665, contains some of the most beautiful drawings of microscopic observations ever made. Who invented the electron microscope? The theoretical and practical limits to the use of the optical microscope were set by the wavelength of light. When the oscilloscope was developed, it was realized that cathode ray beams could be used to resolve much finer detail because their wavelength was so much shorter than that of light. In 1928 Ernst Ruska, 1906 to 1988 and Max Knoll 1897 to 1969 using magnetic fields to focus electrons in a cathode ray beam produced a crude instrument that gave a magnification of 17 and by 1932 they had developed an electron microscope having a magnification of 400 by 1937 James Hillier 1915 had advanced this magnification to 7000 the 1939 instrument vladimir zwerkin 1889 to 1982 developed gave 50 times more detail than any optical microscope ever could with a magnification up to 2 million the electron microscope revolutionized biological research for the first time scientists could see the molecules of cell structures, proteins, and viruses. Who invented the electron microscope? The theoretical and practical limits to the use of the optical microscope were set by the wavelength of light. When the oscilloscope was developed, it was realized that cathode ray beams could be used to resolve much finer detail because their wavelength was so much shorter than that of light. In 1928 Ernst Ruska 1906 to 1988 and Max Knoll 1897 to 1969 using magnetic fields to focus electrons in a cathode ray beam produced a crude instrument that gave a magnification of 17 and by 1932 they had developed an electron microscope having a magnification of 400 by 1937 James Hillier 1915 had advanced this magnification to 7000 the 1939 instrument vladimir zwerkin 1889 to 1982 developed gave 50 times more detail than any optical microscope ever could with a magnification up to 2 million the electron microscope revolutionized biological research for the first time scientists could see the molecules of cell structures, proteins, and viruses.
How does a transmission electron microscope differ from a scanning electron microscope? The electrons used to visualize the specimens in transmission. Electron microscopes are transmitted by the material. The scanning electron microscope beams the electrons onto the surface of the specimen from a fine probe that passes back and forth rapidly. Electrons reflected back from the surface of the specimen, along with other electrons emitted by the specimen itself, are amplified and transmitted to a television screen for viewing. How does a transmission electron microscope differ from a scanning electron microscope? The electrons used to visualize the specimens in transmission. Electron microscopes are transmitted by the material. The scanning electron microscope beams the electrons onto the surface of the specimen from a fine probe that passes back and forth rapidly. Electrons reflected back from the surface of the specimen, along with other electrons emitted by the specimen itself, are amplified and transmitted to a television screen for viewing. What is scanning tunneling microscopy? Scanning tunneling microscopy, STM, also called a scanning probe microscopy, was developed in the 1980s to explore the surface structure of specimens at the atomic level. This technique uses electronic methods to move a metallic tip, a conducting material such as platinum iridium. Composed ideally of a single atom, across the surface of a specimen. As the tip is moved across the surface of the specimen, electrical voltage is applied to the surface. If the tip is close enough to the surface and the surface is electrically conductive, Electrons will begin to leak or tunnel across the gap between the probe and the sample. The tip of the probe is automatically moved up and down to maintain a constant rate of electron tunneling across the gap as the probe scans the sample. The movement is presented on a video screen. Successive scans then build up an image of the surface at atomic resolution. What is scanning tunneling microscopy? Scanning tunneling microscopy, STM also called a scanning probe microscopy, was developed in the 1980s to explore the surface structure of specimens at the atomic level. This technique uses electronic methods to move a metallic tip, a conducting material such as platinum iridium, composed ideally of a single atom, across the surface of a specimen. As the tip is moved across the surface of the specimen, electrical voltage is applied to the surface. If the tip is close enough to the surface and the surface is electrically conductive, electrons will begin to leak or tunnel across the gap between the probe and the sample. The tip of the probe is automatically moved up and down to maintain a constant. 
rate of electron tunneling across the gap as the probe scans the sample. The movement is presented on a video screen. Successive scans then build up an image of the surface at atomic resolution. What is microscopic autoradiography? Microscopic autoradiography is a technique used to localize radioactive molecules within cells. It utilizes photographic emulsion to determine where a specific radioactive compound is located within a cell at the time the cell is fixed and sectioned for microscopy. What is microscopic autoradiography? Microscopic autoradiography is a technique used to localize radioactive molecules within cells. It utilizes photographic emulsion to determine where a specific radioactive compound is located within a cell at the time the cell is fixed and sectioned for microscopy. Which radioisotope is most commonly used for biological specimens? The most widely used radioisotope in autoradiography is tritium, 3H. Tritium allows a resolution of about 1 micrometer with the light. Microscope and close to 0.1 micrometer with the electron microscope. Since hydrogen is common in biological molecules. A wide range of 3H labeled compounds are potentially available for use in autoradiography. 3H amino acids are used for locating newly synthesized proteins, 3-thymidine is used to monitor DNA synthesis. Ribonucleotides such as 3H uridine or 3H cytidine are used to localize newly made RNA molecules and 3H-glucose is used to study the synthesis of polysaccharides. Which radioisotope is most commonly used for biological specimens? The most widely used radioisotope in autoradiography is tritium, 3H. Tritium allows a resolution of about 1 micrometer with the light. Microscope and close to 0.1 micrometer with the electron microscope. Since hydrogen is common in biological molecules. A wide range of 3H labeled compounds are potentially available for use in autoradiography. 3H amino acids are used for locating newly synthesized proteins, 3-thymidine is used to monitor DNA synthesis. Ribonucleotides such as 3H uridine or 3H cytidine are used to localize newly made RNA molecules and 3H-glucose is used to study the synthesis of polysaccharides. What are the steps of microscopic autoradiography? In microscopic autoradiography, the desired radioactively labeled compound 
is first added to cells or organisms, and the material is then incubated. After a period of time to allow the radioactive compound to become incorporated into newly forming intracellular molecules and structures, the incubation is stopped. And the biological specimen is rinsed to wash away the excess radioactive compound. The specimen is prepared in a conventional manner, sectioned and placed on a microscopic slide. The slide is then covered with a thin layer of photographic emulsion. Next, the prepared slide is placed in a sealed box for an appropriate period of time. Several days to several weeks, to allow the radioactivity in the cell to expose the emulsion above it. Upon removal from the sealed box, the emulsion is developed. And the specimen is examined under the microscope. What are the steps of microscopic autoradiography? In microscopic autoradiography, the desired radioactively labeled compound is first added to cells or organisms, and the material is then incubated. After a period of time to allow the radioactive compound to become incorporated into newly forming intracellular molecules and structures, the incubation is stopped. And the biological specimen is rinsed to wash away the excess radioactive compound. The specimen is prepared in a conventional manner, sectioned and placed on a microscopic slide. The slide is then covered with a thin layer of photographic emulsion. Next, the prepared slide is placed in a sealed box for an appropriate period of time. Several days to several weeks, to allow the radioactivity in the cell to expose the emulsion above it. Upon removal from the sealed box, the emulsion is developed and the specimen is examined under the microscope. Why are there so many flies in the summer? Another way to ask this question would be, what is an opportunistic species? Species have evolved two general strategies for success in life. Either they specialize in adaptations that allow them to survive the boom and bust cycles within the environment. Or they concentrate their efforts in taking advantage of short-term opportunities to succeed. Species utilizing these two strategies have various names including opportunist and equilibrium species. Opportunists move into newly opened habitats, for example. As dandelions overwhelm spring lawns, and reproduce rapidly with abandon. Other common examples of opportunistic species include insect species. Like mosquitoes and flies that save their reproductive efforts to exploit. Advantageous changes in their habitat like a hard rain or fresh roadkill. When conditions are just right, these species go full tilt from mere existence to population explosion. Which explains why fly populations boom so suddenly in the summer. What is scanning tunneling microscopy? Scanning tunneling microscopy, STM, 
also called a scanning probe microscopy. Was developed in the 1980s to explore the surface structure of specimens at the atomic level. This technique uses electronic methods to move a metallic tip, a conducting material such as platinum iridium. Composed ideally of a single atom, across the surface of a specimen. As the tip is moved across the surface of the specimen, electrical voltage is applied to the surface. If the tip is close enough to the surface and the surface is electrically conductive, electrons will begin to leak or tunnel across the gap between the probe and the sample. The tip of the probe is automatically moved up and down to maintain a constant rate of electron tunneling across the gap as the probe scans the sample. The movement is presented on a video screen. Successive scans then build up an image of the surface at atomic resolution. Who invented the electron microscope? The theoretical and practical limits to the use of the optical microscope were set by the wavelength of light. When the oscilloscope was developed, it was realized that cathode ray beams could be used to resolve much finer detail because their wavelength was so much shorter than that of light. In 1928 Ernst Ruska, 1906 to 1988 and Max Knoll 1897 to 1969 using magnetic fields to focus electrons in a cathode ray beam produced a crude instrument that gave a magnification of 17 and by 1932 they had developed an electron microscope having a magnification of 400 by 1937 James Hillier 1915 had advanced this magnification to 7000 the 1939 instrument Vladimir Zwerkin 1889 to 1982 developed gave 50 times more detail than any optical microscope ever could with a magnification up to 2 million the electron microscope revolutionized biological research for the first time scientists could see the molecules of cell structures, proteins, and viruses. How is biodiversity measured? Biodiversity or biological diversity refers to the breadth of species represented within ecosystems or even on Earth as a whole. Biodiversity may be defined at three levels, genetic diversity, species diversity, and ecosystem diversity. Genetic diversity refers to the variety of genes found within a population or between populations of the same species. Species diversity may also be described as species richness. What is a variable? A variable is something that is changed or altered in an experiment. For example, to determine the effect of light on plant growth. Growing one plant in a sunny window and one in a dark closet will provide evidence as to the effect of light on plant growth.
How does deductive reasoning differ from inductive reasoning? Deductive reasoning, often used in mathematics and philosophy. Uses general principles to examine specific cases. Inductive reasoning is the method of discovering general principles by close examination of specific cases. Inductive reasoning first became important to science in the 1600s, when Francis Bacon 1561-1626, Sir Isaac Newton, 1642-1727 and their contemporaries began to use the results of specific experiments to infer general scientific principles. What is bioperacy? Bioperacy refers to the development of pharmaceutical products without compensation to the native communities that protected and nurtured the organisms on which these products are based. In other words, how many different species are there within a habitat? Finally, measuring ecosystem diversity is an attempt to keep track of the loss of different types of habitats. This in turn gives scientists a sense of what types of species are going extinct at any given time.